Hi. Okay. Okay. Um, this is a something like a set of prep propositions titled "The Labor of Appearance." Black title card cut to black again. A gray stretch of highway from a dash cam's point of view. Dry, gray, months of oil baked into it by LA heat. No sky, just road eaten up by engines steadily twisted under like, under like a treadmill track. I build structures, buildings go up, they're vertical forms. My focus is on the vertical evolution of a form, not necessarily on the horizontal linear expo exposition of that form. The object glistens on a hillside, withering in its own three dimensions, wondering about extrusion. Smash cut to the object, same hillside, glistening and unaware. Do you ever realize you've only ever been interested in one thing? It's not totally a realization that you're, po that you're boring. If anything, you are consistent. Nothing is the most interesting of all things. There should also be a word for when you remember something so much and so often that you reinvent it a fictitious versioning of itself, which could possibly be fictitious to start. Like the title of this, The Labor of Appearance. I won't say who I thought it came from, but let's just say that for the lack of any other indication, it's now an Aria Dean original. Blackness is this other no thing. Nothing is the most interesting of all things. A no thing whose condition of possibility is its own excess. This also being its Achilles heel in that it forces its presence as something, such a something, rather than a void, the, vo the void, bubbling, spilling past its frayed edges, getting its sopping nothingness on everything. What kind of object abolishes itself and how? And everyone will answer Jean Tingley, to which you will say, yes, yes, I know, but not that way, almost, but not like that. Maybe to distinguish, the abolition would have to leave no trace of itself, no trace, ghost, monument to either the destruction or the thing that was there. The thing would have to be destruction, the corrosive element. Another crucial question to eventually ask, the difference between abolition and annihilation here. An excessive nothing, being and signifying too much, and at the same time, voided evaluation, an absence of value, negation of values, the enemy of values. Mm -hmm. The corrosive element destroying, at the, at destroying all that comes near. In this sense, a black hole, a whole black hole. An absence of value where the labor relation goes to die, where death goes to labor. The labor of appearance in other places considered as the bondage of appearance. We probably should make a first distinction between labor and bondage from the dictionary. Labor, work, especially physical work. Bondage, the state of being a slave. Theoretically, economically, these are two different kinds of alienation. The alienation of the worker from their product and the after production. The slave, on the other hand, slavery is natal, natal and alienation by way of social death, which is to say that a slave has no symbolic currency or material labor power to exchange. A slave, unlike a worker, does not enter in a, into a transaction of value. The labor of appearance and its bondage. Those bound to appear must still labor to do so, but without the distance of the process of an alienation. The breathing room it provides, however rancid the air. In distinction from Greek apprehending, that which is and opens and rises, arises itself, presences, upon the man as one who opens himself to what presence is, man looked upon by that which is. Modern representing, whose meaning the word rep representatio first brings to expression, intends something quite different. To represent means to bring what is present at hand before oneself as something standing over against it, to relate it to oneself as a normative realm. To set out before oneself and to set forth in relation to oneself. She had long been preoccupied with running away from herself, or not quite herself, maybe more the crust that had hardened around her to transmit something intelligible to the outside. Like a nasty little alien spirit acting as the control center of this thing that can only glimpse, 
can only glimpse itself through mirrors. With the subsequent opacity of the traditional language of art, painting and sculpture in the 60s, the objects, painting or sculptures themselves, began to lose believability. One was always in a position of being outside the work and never inside. With that began through the 60s, an increased shift of locus from the unbelievable object to what was believable and real, the context. Objects or forms employed became more articulations of context rather than simply dumb objects of perception in themselves. Subjectivism. The result of a long process of aestheticization by which we have come to understand the relationship between artist, artwork, and audience as a relation between subjects and objects. The artist is a subject who creates an object to be viewed and experienced by other subjects. On the eve of late modernity, this subjectivism gives way to another form of relation in the world where alongside the technologization of existence in general, wherein everything comes to be viewed as a resource to be optimized, the subject begins to view herself as well as a resource to be optimized as object. Subjectivism turned inward on itself. The subject objectified alongside the other beings and subjects set out before her. The late modern artist operating at optimal efficiency becomes her own subject matter. She begins to, quote unquote, mine her experience, to labor to appear. In unfreedom, felt as freedom and vice versa. All this talk of refusal, my mom always says you attract what you resist. An image of two bulls in a sheet of snow, horns locked. Maybe their limbs are tied too. I guess what I'm saying is you can refuse a lot of things, but can you refuse to appear? A sign which refuses to signify. There used to be another part of my title. It was denaturalizing the labor of appearance. Denaturalizing is different from refusing, is different from defamiliarizing. Perhaps if only that denaturalizing is a sustained practice, perhaps if only in that denaturalizing is a sustained practice, whereas refusing might be something more like a response. A laborer who refuses to work is on strike, is insufficient, unproductive. A slave who refuses to work is a fugitive or perhaps dead. Talking around a problem in order to give it shape, talking around an object to give it shape, talking around myself to make it known that I'm just a whole, one of the problems, the corrosion. An important theoretical distinction. There's nothing that I love so much, this same thing that I've been thinking about isn't it, something that else so much isn't a, something like a pure transcendent free space on the bingo board. If it's anywhere, it's the, board on, it's the board's underside, or better, the force holding the board's particles together. To prove myself as the soppy oozing nothingness that looks so much like something, a pair of human elusiveness. I wither in my three dimensions wondering about extrusion. Thank you. <laughs>